This is the Weight Loss for Busy Physicians podcast with Katrina Ubel, MD, episode number one. This is Weight Loss for Busy Physicians, the podcast where busy doctors like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the weight and feel better so that you can have the life you want. This is the resource you've been looking for to guide you on the journey to overcome your stress eating and exhaustion and move into freedom around food. Here's your host, Dr. Katrina Ubel. Hey everyone, welcome to Weight Loss for Busy Physicians. I'm Katrina Ubel, MD. I'm so incredibly excited to start this podcast for physicians who are super busy and want to lose the weight permanently. I'm first going to give you a little background info on me so you can get to know me a little bit better. And then I'm going to teach you today the foundational principle that all my coaching is based on. So my background is that I'm a board certified pediatrician. I actually have an undergrad degree in biomedical engineering and then went to med school thinking I was all about ortho, going to do ortho all the way and thought that all the way through third year when I did my surgery rotation and kind of thought, "Mm, maybe not, maybe I want to switch things up. So ended up settling on pediatrics and did my residency at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin, ended up settling in the Milwaukee area and uh, worked in a private practice practice pediatric clinic for 10 years. And I think I'll get into that story a little bit more as we go along with these podcasts. But it really has been an interesting process transitioning from being a pediatrician in clinical practice all the way into being now an entrepreneur and coaching the people who are just like who I was. I so wish I had learned these principles well, gosh, I mean, really in high school is when everyone should be learning this stuff. But as soon as I started learning it, I was immediately thinking, oh my gosh, like my kids need to learn this stuff. Everyone needs to learn this. I thought like, how can I teach my patients? But then I really decided that who I really wanted to focus on were the people who are just like me when I was in practice, because this information is going to seriously change your life. So the results that I have gotten the first results that I've really gotten from doing this work as a life and weight loss coach is that I've lost 45 pounds. And it has been a totally different weight loss experience than any time that I've done it before when I did Weight Watchers or, you know, other online programs, I have found this to be totally different from the actual physical sense of my experience of it, but also the amount of emotional mental work that I've done to really decrease the desire that I had for foods that didn't serve me, um, which I just never knew was even possible. It's like instead of having all these foods around that we have to resist and avoid, like what if we just didn't want them? Like, wouldn't that be amazing? If it just was like anything, like my clients are totally going to recognize this. I tell this to everybody. Like, what if it was just like an onion? You know, when you have an onion on your counter, you're never like, oh my God, I want that onion. You're just like, oh, you know, it'll taste good when it's cooked in something or whatever. But we don't have like this emotional attachment to onions, you know, or like the other one that I have another client who always laughs when I bring this up, but I'm vegetarian, longtime vegetarian. And so like I... If I smell bacon cooking, it smells good to me. I remember that bacon used to taste good to me, but I don't have any desire for it. It has no hold over me. I have freedom from bacon. You might think that's very, very sad. I don't, but it just is not an issue for me. And so I think of it like if there's like a big meat buffet, like it might smell good to me, but I don't want to eat it. Like it has no influence over me at all. I have complete freedom from the desire to eat that. And that's what we want to have with all the things that don't serve us that aren't fuel for our bodies. So that would be like all the sugary desserts and everything, or maybe you're more of like a salty person, like the fries and chips and, and things like that. Like, what if we just didn't really want them? Not that you don't ever eat them, but if your desire is way, way, way down, it's just not really a big issue to you. So when you decide to eat it, you eat it, but you're not resisting and avoiding it all the time. So I've lost those 45 pounds. I weigh seriously what I weighed in ninth grade. It's really crazy. I still am not even sure I totally 
believe that this is even possible. But besides that, I've learned how to manage my mind. My experience of my entire life is so much more pleasant now. My experience of my children is so much more pleasant. My relationships with my husband, my family members have improved so much. And friends, it's just, it's been absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to teach this to you guys because in my opinion, the medical professionals, there's like this vacuum for us in terms of assistance. It's kind of like this idea that, oh, you're a doctor, you're in healthcare, like you know all the stuff about health and how the body works, like you should be healthy. But the fact of the matter is, is that we are human beings just like anyone else. Our bodies work the exact same way. And just because we might have the intellectual knowledge doesn't mean that we don't struggle with the application of that. So that's what I'm going to be teaching you on this podcast. This is going to be really a game changer for a lot of you. And I'm so excited to be here today to get going on that. So in my practice as a life and weight loss coach, who I primarily work with is women physicians and other people who work in healthcare. Now, if you are not one of the people who falls into that classification, do not be concerned. I can coach and help anybody. It's just that what I talk about, the examples I give are going to be a little bit more focused on that kind of a lifestyle. So if you ever have any questions about that, for sure, let me know in the comments on the show notes page. And you can find the show notes at www.katrinaubellmd.com forward slash one. So again, www.katrina. U B like boy, E L L M D dot com forward slash the number one. I want to let you know really what my vision is for this podcast. I want to be able to help as many physicians and other people who work in healthcare as possible really get the results that they want in their lives by learning to manage their minds. You know, it really, it's not a luxury to lose weight and be healthy. It really is your responsibility as an adult human to manage your emotional life and your physical body. And that's what I'm going to teach you on this podcast. So let's just really start digging into what I wanted to talk to you about today. And so what I want to discuss is why you're not getting the results that you want in your life. And it's really, really simple. If you don't have the results that you want, it's because you're not taking the actions that you need to take to get the results that you do want. So here's some examples of that. So these are all personal examples, but I think they'll apply to you as well. So how often have we planned a healthy lunch the night before, have it all in our bag, go to work, lunch rolls around, the drug rep comes, and within two seconds... We've already made up our minds that we're not going to eat the healthy lunch that we brought with us, that we're instead going to eat the Mexican that smells so good or the burgers or whatever. It ends up being pizza or something like that. That happened to me all the time. And I make myself feel better about it because I would tell myself, well, like, oh, sweet, because now I get lunch today and I already have my lunch packed for tomorrow because I can eat tomorrow what I planned on eating today. So see, I'm actually helping myself out. I'm actually doing myself a favor. And so I would play these mind games with myself to make it okay that I was going off of my plan of what I had planned to do. Another example was deciding like, okay, I'm not going to have any snacks at night anymore. After dinner, that's it. I'm not eating anymore. And then every night, cookies, ice cream, whatever it ends up being, just deciding at night, that I just don't want to do what I promised myself to do and eating those. And then the double whammy at the end is that you then you feel bad about yourself, right? You have this self-loathing or berating yourself, negative self-talk. Like, what am I going to start doing what I'm supposed to do? I know better than this. Of course, I'm overweight. Of course, my clothes don't fit. So it's this whole cycle where, you know, not only are we not getting the results we want in terms of what size our body is, but, you know, I don't think anybody wants a result of doing things that then leads to self-loathing. Another example that's not food related, because I know not everybody listening today is necessarily having food related issues. So, you know, our houses, most of us have too much stuff, right? So we come up with a plan to declutter. We're like all rubbed up to go read the latest decluttering book. We're going to get organized and coming up with the whole plan and then not sticking to it for more than like a week or two. 
I've totally done that. Like, okay, I'm going to put everything away. You know, if you you know, touch things only once, all of that stuff. And you know, it's all great for a couple of weeks. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, I guess we're not doing that anymore. So the result is the house is still disorganized. It's still messy. It's still cluttered. So the question then is, what is driving those actions? Because these actions are things that we don't want. So why are we doing them? And the answer is how we feel. What's driving those actions is how we feel or our emotions. And then the question is, what makes us feel that way? And what makes us feel that way is our thoughts about our circumstances. So we have some situation in the house and maybe we have, you know, you could count out how many toys are on the floor or, you know, all in disarray all over the place. And then we assign meaning to that. We can decide how we want to think about that. And those are our thoughts. So thoughts are really just a sentence in our head. And these are like seriously flying through our heads at lightning speed. So there's different research on this, you know, anywhere from 40,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day are flying through our brains. That's a lot. It's really our entire experience of our lives. It's the series of these thoughts going through our heads. So the circumstance is really just the neutral fact in the situation. So, so oftentimes we think that it's our circumstances that are the problem, but it's really the way we are thinking about our circumstances. So like here is an example of a neutral fact. You step on the scale, the scale tells you you're 200 pounds. That's a neutral fact, right? That is just your gravitational pull on the earth in that one moment of time. It's completely neutral. Or what size clothes you wear? You know, what size clothes fit you? Like I fit into a size 14 right now. That is neutral. Or even what food you just ate. It's very, very neutral. Like it's, we assign meaning, whether it was the right choice or the wrong choice or good food or bad food or on plan or off plan. Ultimately, like if you put food in your mouth, chewed it up and swallowed it, that's very, very neutral. So all of these elements tie together in what's called the model or the thought model. And this was developed by Brooke Castillo, who was my life coach instructor and mentor. And I just want to reassure you that this is all going to be in writing in the show notes for this podcast. So you don't have to take notes. You can go to the link that I'll give you at the end of this podcast and you'll be able to go and see it all in writing. So let's just review it here. So the model starts with circumstances, those neutral facts and circumstances can trigger our thoughts. Thoughts cause our feelings. Feelings drive our actions and our actions create our results. And our results are always proof or evidence of our original thought. So let me just go through that again. So we have these neutral facts, these circumstances, and then we have thoughts about them. So circumstances trigger our thoughts about them. The thoughts cause our feelings or emotions. The feelings drive our actions and our actions can be like something we do or can actually be like an inaction. So for instance, if you know, what you really want to be doing is going out and doing yard work, but instead you just sit on the couch and eat ice cream and watch Netflix. That's sort of an inaction as well. Like you're not doing the things that you need to take to get the results that you want, which are to clean up the yard or whatever it may be. So it can be action, inaction, or it can also be a reaction. So say, you know, you're feeling a certain way. And then what you do is you scream at your husband or are short with your kids, that would be a reaction. And so our actions, inactions, or reactions create our results. So when you're not getting the results that you want, we can back it up this line in this model, and look at the thoughts that we're having that are creating these results. So you may be thinking, okay, yeah, intellectually, this all sounds good. I'm understanding this. It makes sense. But I have no idea what the thoughts are. Like, I don't think I'm thinking anything. In fact, when I was first learning this, I was seriously just like, I don't think I think anything. Like, I just have like songs from the radio in my head all day long. And my instructor, she was like, "Mm, I don't think so. You might want to have to go and become a little bit more aware of what's going on in your brain. So this is a skill. This isn't going to be something you're going to be perfect at immediately. And I'm going to walk you through the whole process on this podcast about how to get better at this skill. Because once you know how to do this, you're going to be able to coach yourself through any 
situation in your life. Like anything that isn't going well or isn't going how you want it to, or you're feeling a negative emotion about something, you're going to be able to work through it all with this model. It's amazing. And what you're going to love about it is it's just so logical and algorithmic. Like it's exactly how our brains work as doctors, right? Like we are not necessarily totally into all the kind of out there woo woo kind of stuff. This is not that at all. This is extremely logical and it's going to make perfect sense to you over the course of time. So over the course of this podcast series, I'm also going to really teach you how to get into those thoughts, figure out what those thoughts are. So don't worry if you're thinking, I'm really not sure what these thoughts are. But the first thing is just starting to pay attention. So so you can definitely start with that. So you may also think like, I don't think there's really anything going on here. Like there's something deeper, like it's not that complicated. I just like food. Like I look at the brownie and I just go, "Mm, that would taste good. Like that's my thought. Well, yes, on the surface, that's the thought that you're having. But ultimately, there's going to be something deeper there that is really driving you to think that it's a good idea to go off your healthy eating plan and eat that brownie instead. So there's a deeper desire. There's maybe thoughts about how you deserve that food, how you think that you need to give yourself a reward, things like that. So those are things that are kind of deeper. And so it's not necessarily going to be super available to you right in the beginning. So I just want to mention that to just be patient. We're going to work through all of that. So when we work on the why about how we got into our current situation, whether it is overeating and needing to lose weight, or why we're feeling we're starting to feel burned out at work, why the house is a perpetual mess, why our relationships aren't what we want them to be. That is how we start figuring out how to make them better. Like you need to know why you are at the place you are now before you can move forward. Now, does that mean you're going way back in the past and evaluating your childhood and all these relationships? No, it definitely doesn't mean that. And sometimes you don't even need to go back into the past really at all. Like sometimes you can just look at it like, okay, I grew up in a family that followed the clean plate club rule okay, no wonder I feel like I always have to finish everything on my plate. Like you you don't have to like go into like why your parents chose that and all their baggage and things like that. It's just as simple as that. Like you have a belief that the best thing to do, the right thing to do is to eat all your food. Okay, so let's evaluate that belief. Is that actually serving you? You know, if you did that and always ate all the food on your plate, but you were thin and happy, Great. It's obviously working for you. Go for it. Continue on. No problem. But if you're finding that you overeat and you are not where you want to be in terms of your body and your relationship with food, then that's probably something to to work on and to examine and explore further. So there's a reason you're in the position you're in now. And I want to stress to you that the solution is not to just do something differently. That is what you get when you are looking at all the different diet plans that are out there. They're all action oriented. It's all like, okay, instead of doing this one thing you were doing that wasn't good, do this different thing. And on the surface, that sounds great, right? Like I'll just do this different thing and I should get the results I want. Except for the fact that how often does that result in permanent weight loss? Almost never right? Look around at all the people that we know who go on different diets, you know, lose a little weight or maybe a lot of weight. And then over the course of months or years, they gain it all back again. And then some, you know, there's something still there that's not getting dealt with. And that's the root cause. That's what we need to be looking at. Once we figure that out, then changing the action isn't going to be so difficult because we aren't fighting against this underlying driving force that's causing us to not get the results that we want. So if we go back to that model, we can choose the action of eating healthier. But if we don't change the thoughts and the feelings that are driving that action of overeating or eating for comfort or eating to make our lives tolerable, then what we're using is willpower to keep that up. And willpower is like a muscle, it fatigues. So some people have a little bit more than others, just like some people are stronger than others in their muscle strength. But nobody can keep up willpower forever, 
also, this is not a surprise to us, right? Because look around, people use willpower for a while. And then before they know it, they're back to eating whatever they had decided they didn't want to eat. So so when we want permanent results, we want our house permanently organized. We want permanent, better relationships with the people in our lives. We want permanent freedom from overeating, all the food chatter in our brains. We want to permanently wear a size six or whatever it is. We take a look at the model that's giving us our current results that we don't want, figure out what those thoughts and feelings are that are creating that. And then we can decide to change what we think about that circumstance and and how we want to feel so that we can feel the way we need to feel to take action to do what we need to do to get the results we want. And that is the sum of this work. That is really the essence of the whole thing is looking at the whole pathway that got you where you are, and then deciding in a way that serves you to think about it differently to move forward. So this doesn't mean that you're like, I have a horrible relationship with my mother in law. So I guess I just have to decide she's amazing. You know, because you don't believe that, right? So that's not going to be a good solution. It's not something like that where it's like just positive thinking. It really is so much more about choosing a thought that feels true and believable to you. And it may take some time to get there. I'm going to go through all of this with you on upcoming podcasts. We're going to figure this all out together. So we work from the original model and sometimes have to take those baby steps And maybe even just decide we want to come at it from a place of compassion, you know, a very neutral place. Like, I just want to be content. I don't need to be completely joyous when I'm with my family. But I really would like to be content, compassionate. I want to have empathy for them. I want to be unbothered when they do things or say things. And that's all available through this work. So really any problem fits into this model. And I can't wait to show you guys more about how that all works. So please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And that way you'll get all future podcasts into your podcast app. And then also, you know, what would really, really help and be amazing is if you could leave a review for me on iTunes. That'd be fantastic. All right, guys, I can't wait to talk to you again next week. And I will talk to you soon. All right, take care. Thanks for joining us on Weight Loss for Busy Physicians. Now, take the next step and go to KatrinaUbelMD.com to download just what you need, the Busy Doctor's Quick Start Guide to Effective Weight Loss. Join us again next week for more support to keep you in control and on the path to freedom around food.